So one thing to keep in mind here is that you know we're getting a post back from our post service and we're getting it back by its ID, so its primary key. And then notice that as we're building out our view model, we're counting on these navigation properties to be actually fulfilled. So, we, so when we're turning a post, we're actually also expecting to be able to access the user navigation property on that post. And if you recall, if I hit F12 here on user, this application user property is actually virtual. So it's gonna be lazy loaded. And that means we need to explicitly make sure that, that we include it when we pull back our post from the database. So let's head into our post service and make sure that we're doing that. And so we'll scroll down to get by ID. Let's see. Ah, so we haven't even filled out get by ID yet. So let's go ahead and do that and we'll make sure that we use those includes. So just as before, we're going to return from our dbcontext.posts collection. Oops. We'll say where post.id is equal to this post ID. We'll include and to use include, we need to make sure we're bringing in any framework core, so we'll bring that in. We'll include the post user. We'll also include the post replies. And I'd also like to also include the post forum. And we'll call first or default here. In fact, we should just be able to call first and return the first post that corresponds to the ID that we pass our get by ID method. And then off of replies, um, if you recall when we built out replies in our controller, which I'll revisit very quickly here, when we build post replies, we'll have 12 there. You can see that on the reply, I'm also expecting to have a user. And so back in our post service, when I get the replies from our post object, I also want to call then include on the replies object, reply.user as well. Okay, so I'm gonna actually put that on one line. And so that's going to get us a single post back from the database that we can then use. So I'll close this and just close everything except our post controller. And we'll scroll up a bit here to our index action again. All right, cool, so now we can go ahead and once again create a new view for our post index. So we'll head into our views folder, go ahead and create a new folder actually for our post. And in here, we'll add a new item and we'll select MVC view page index.cshtml. And once again, you should be seeing a pattern here. We're going to bring in lambda forums dot models dot post dot post index model so that we can use it here on our post index model and for our purposes again just before we add too many too much styling to our application we'll just have a simple h1 heading here and bring in the model title and we'll just create a couple divs here just to kind of get the feel for making sure we get the application making sure we get all the data out onto the page so we can do like the author name here and just say author name or author created and maybe like the author rating after it and we can just put that in like parens and then we'll have another div here Oops. And this is where we'll just put the post content. And then we'll have an if block here. And we'll say at if model.replies.any. We can say for each of our reply in model.replies. Go ahead and have a div that wraps 
each of the replies. And so let's go ahead and just copy and paste these divs that we had for posts and we'll tuck them inside our set of replies here. So we can say like reply author, reply created, and reply. And here we'll have simply at reply dot author name at reply dot created and at reply dot reply content. Okay, and again, this will get more complex and we'll display more information on the page as we get to that point. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and make sure that this is working. Um, so we don't have any posts. And in just a little while, we're going to build our create post form where we can actually post to our database. But we can actually kind of mock out some data just using a SQL insert here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and save this and make a quick commit here. Okay, and then we'll head over into SQL Server Management Studio. And what I'm gonna do is create a new query window here with Control N. And we'll select star from posts. So you can see we have an empty table. And what I'm gonna do is insert into posts, content created, form ID, title, user ID, and then we'll say values We'll say first Python post, get date for the created date. Forum ID is one because that corresponds to our Python forum. And then the title will also be uh, first Python post and maybe over in content, we'll say um, content here and make it a little bit longer. And for user ID, we're actually going to need to create a user for this to work. And so let's just go ahead and take the identity framework for a test run here and see if we can create a new member. At the very least, that should allow us to um, provide a, a true user ID here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and minimize this. And we'll start up our application. And so we'll go here and when we actually created this project, if you recall, it created this register and login actions and views and everything for us. So there's nothing that we actually have to do in this particular project to um, do anything more than the standard identity that's being implemented for us. So we're gonna go ahead and create a test email here. And we'll do a password. and go ahead and register, okay? And I'll go ahead and save that to the browser for now. And so, yeah, now you can see some authentication is already taking place for us. We'll look at that and how we're going to expand that a little bit down the line. Um, but for now, we did that just so we could actually see a new user get populated to our database. So if we come back here and now we select star from ASP.NET users, this is where our user records will get stored. So we'll hit F5 here to run that. So you can see now that I have a new user record. We've got the uh, username, which is actually being set to the email address here. Um, so that looks good. We'll write some functionality to actually overwrite that and allow users to have true usernames in addition to um, their email. That's all right for now. You can see we have a null profile image URL and a uh, rating of zero that sort of thing. So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and copy this ID and we're gonna paste it here for the user ID um, that's gonna be on this post because it's gonna require that as a foreign key. So let's go ahead and try to make this insert. And you can see that we get one row affected and so now if we select star from posts, we get a single post record in our database. 
So it should correspond to the user that I just created. It has a title, corresponds to the Python forum, um, etc. In fact, if you're interested, we can write a little bit more SQL here, just something very simple. Let's select star from posts, we'll alias it P, and we'll interjoin forums F on P dot forum ID is equal to F dot ID. And then we can say where P dot ID is equal to one. And rather than select star, maybe we'll just select P dot title and then F dot title, so that's the forum name, and we can say as forum name, and for our P dot title we can say as post name, or maybe you know post title. Go ahead and clean up our query here a little bit. And then I'll also interjoin ASP net users u on u.id is equal to p.userid. And go ahead and run this query. And you can see how our foreign keys will all work together. So we got a post title on the Python forum um, by the user that I just created. It's kind of a little confirmation that you can see that our insert worked properly. So we'll go ahead and minimize this. And now what I'll do is we'll visit slash forum slash index. And we'll visit our Python forums and we'll see if this works. Okay, so we hit a breakpoint. And I'm gonna control shift F9 to remove all breakpoints for right now. And then hit continue. Okay, so you can see now that we get a first Python post out. We have an empty cell here and if we inspect that yeah, we can see that we just have an empty cell here, so we'll have to see what we intended to put there. So let's go into our topic.cshtml file, which is in our views folder, and then forum topic.cshtml. And in fact, it is this uh, post author name. We come back. Looks like we need to actually populate that in our controller, so we'll take a look at that in just a moment here. Let's see if we can click on this link yet, which should take us, if you look down at the bottom of the browser window, to post slash index slash one. Okay, and you can see that. So now we get this first Python post up here. We have the author uh, with the zero user rating that we have, and then some of the, the metadata on this post object. So we've got the created on and the post content. So now we've got the basic building blocks in terms of having things wired up with each other. I'd like to go ahead and try to see what's going on and fix our output to the topic view and then we'll go forth and build our first form where we can actually create a post as a user. So let's take a look here at topic.cshtml and it's in the second cell here, this post.authorName. So let's go into our forum controller again. So controllers, forum controller, topic. And yeah, we're simply not assigning author name here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. And then under post listings here, we need to supply a value for author name. So that'll be author.post.user and we'll say username. Again, um, the way that the identity framework is set up right now is just going to use the email as a username. We'll go ahead and fix that in the future. So now if we just fire up IIS again, And I noticed that on my machine, at least, uh, something that I keep getting is that Chrome didn't shut down correctly uh, from the little Chrome that this uh, application spins up, but you can just ignore that. And yeah, we'll head back over to forum slash index and we'll click on Python. And yeah, so we can now see that the username, or in this case, the email, is getting populated in our post listing model. So that's good. If we head back to SQL here and maybe we add something else here and we just give it another title like another Python post in the same forum uh, with the same user we can go ahead and run an insert here and maybe just to make things interesting we'll post a few more things here And we can get rid of these additional values and just put commas after each of these rather than semicolons. 
Okay, and we'll go ahead and run this insert and insert a few more posts into our database. If we minimize this and refresh, we can see that we get some new posts out here. If we click on any one of them, we get taken to our post index page corresponding to that post's ID.